This is part two of the chapter three optimization word problems test and today I'm going to do problems three and four from this handout that I gave you. I'll put the link to it again below. Okay so it says a rectangle with a perimeter of 80 centimeters is spun on its side to create a cylinder. What is the maximum volume of the cylinder? And then I give you the volume of the cylinder and the circumference. Now because I'm really sick, I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that is show you the solution that I just, I actually started this video earlier, and then I had a little coughing fit and I had to stop. So instead of writing it out all over again, I'm just going to explain the solution to you. So the first thing I did was draw a diagram. So here's my diagram. I've got a rectangle. I'm going to spin this so that this part here gets rolled around. So this part here, Y, is actually the circumference of my cylinder, where X is going to be the height. You can see if I roll this over, bloop, bloop, put this side to here, made nice little, just like if I did this, right? This would be circumference and this would be the height. I was given that the perimeter was 80. So I have two X's and two Y's are going to add up to 80. So that means one X and one Y would be 40. Now I've declared that my height is going to be h, uh, x, sorry, this is my height, and that y then would be 40 minus x. So I'm just rewriting this equation in terms of y. But y is also equal to the circumference, and the circumference is 2 pi r. So dividing both sides by 2 pi, like this, I get an expression for r in terms of x. So now I have r is 40 minus x over 2 pi. Okay, so now back to the question. It says that I'm trying to maximize the volume of the cylinder. So here's my volume equation, pi r squared h. So pi is pi, it's a constant, so I'm gonna leave that there. And then I have r squared, so I take my r from here and I plug it in over here and I'm going to square it and multiply it by the height, which is x. So once I've multiplied, I've got pi x here and I have to square everything in this bracket here. So I did square 1600 twice the product and squared the x and divided by 4 pi squared. So I brought the 1 over 4 pi out front, and then I expanded this x into what was in the brackets here. So I just took the constant out front, and I've made this x squared minus 80x squared, sorry, x cubed minus 80x squared plus 1600x. So I've expanded this into this bracket. So now I have volume. This is the volume and I need to take the derivative to try to find the maximum volume. So a constant times a function, the derivative of that is a constant times the derivative of the function. So I could just leave this out front, and then I took the derivative of this from the inside. So that gave me 3x squared minus 60x plus 1600. So once you have your derivative, as you know, to find the critical values, you have to set v prime equal to zero. So if this is zero, then the whole thing is zero, right? So I want to know what makes x zero, what makes this part of the equation zero. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula and solve for x. So once you've done all that work, and you can just freeze frame and do your math and make sure you're doing it properly, I get that x is approximately equal to 40 or 13.33. Now, as you know, it can't be 40 because my equation up here says that x plus y has to be equal to 40. And if x was 40, then y would be zero and we wouldn't have a rectangle to make a cylinder out of. So you must declare that that value is inadmissible and so I said x had to be 13.33 centimeters. So I put that over here. 
and then y is going to be equal to 40 minus this, which is 26.67. So a nice concluding statement, x is this, y is that for maximum value. And then depending on what your teacher wants as proof, or maybe not, I did a first derivative test. Maybe you haven't done that yet. Maybe you have. So I said v prime here. Is, this is a like a little number line for my v prime. And I put 13.33 on here. And I test a value to the left and to the right of this number into the derivative to see if I get a positive or a negative solution. So to the left, if you plugged in, say, 10 here, you'll get a positive answer. If you plugged in 14 or 15, whatever you want to work with, into this, you would get a negative answer showing that this was a maximum value. Okay, so that's number three. So let's go on to number four, which is a revenue question. And it says, a retailer has a bargain bin containing items to be sold at $10 each. At this price, they sell 25 items per day. The average retail cost of the items in the bin is $5. So that means they're making a profit of $5 on every sale that they're making. Then it goes on to say if they lower the price by 24 cents, they get five more items sold each day. And how should the items be priced if they want to keep the price between $7 and $10 per item? Okay, so this is like blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. Um, this $5 is important. Um, the selling price is not important for a profit statement. Well, it is to find the profit, but it's not going to be in our equation. And I'll show you right now. We'll do this one. So right now, the revenue... They said they're selling 25 items at $10. So that means their profit is 25 times 5. Because $10 minus $5 is $5. Okay, that's what they said um, the cost was. So this is cost. This is revenue. Or selling price. Revenue, you have to multiply by items. So this is profit per sale. Okay, so they're making $5 on each one. So the revenue is 25 times 10, but the profit is 25 times 5. Now it says that for every 24, if we go down 24 cents, we go up 5 sales. So all you have to do is match these again with dollars and numbers. Put an X after it because 1 gives me this, 2 would give me 10 and 48 cents, and so on. So profit maximized now is going to be, I'm going to take 25 and I'm going to add 5X to it. That means I'm selling 5 more and multiply by the new selling or the new profit price because whatever you don't get in the revenue is coming directly off your profit, right? If I sell something for $7 and it costs me 5 I make 2 If I sell something for $10 and I sell it for 5 I make 5 So it comes right off. So 5 minus 0.24x. Okay, so now you have to expand this before you take the derivative. So I get... 125 minus 6x plus 25x minus 1.2x squared. And it's a good idea to write this in descending order. 1.2x squared plus 19x minus, I'm sorry, plus 125. And now I'm going to take the derivative. I'm going to call it P prime. So minus 2.4x plus 19. And for critical values, set P prime equal to 0. And I get 2.4x is equal to 19. And x is equal to 7.91. So now remember, when you're doing these problems, these sort of revenue problems, 
this is let x, we should probably make a let statement. So let x represent the number, it's the number of 24 cent decreases. Okay, it's the number. It's very important that you don't say, oh yeah, that's the selling price. No, 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 no. You need to reduce 7.91 times 24 cents. So 7.91 times 0.24. Let me just do that on the calculator here. 7.9, oh, got to turn it on. Isn't that amazing? Times 0.24, I get a dollar 89.8. So dollar, approximately a dollar 90. So this is how much you reduce the price. Okay, so it was 7.91 decreases of 24 cents. So if I reduce the price by $1.90, sell at um, 10 minus $1.90. That's eight dollars and ten cents, right? Eight dollars and ten cents. Nine, ten. Okay, and that fits with that gobbledygook at the end of the question that said it had to remain between seven and ten dollars. Yes, we're between seven and ten dollars. Seven and ten dollars, and I really didn't have to pay any attention to that at all because I only had one solution to choose from. Okay, so you could figure out the profit if you wanted to. Just plug it back in here, put in your um, one point or seven point nine one here, seven point nine one here, and you'll get your profit. Okay, so that's four of the questions, and I'll try to get to the last two, hopefully tomorrow when I'm feeling just a little bit better. Bye for now.